Hello and welcome back to another video on Unpack Technologies. Recently, Apple released macOS Big Sur to the public, an update which was packed with new features. The most noticeable one being the bold new design throughout the entire operating system. However, this update also left many Mac users disappointed as many Macs were dropped from the official support list. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install macOS Big Sur on these older Macs which is still more than capable of running this operating system. So, let's get straight into it. As you can see here, I have a mid-2012 non-Retina MacBook Pro, which is not supported by macOS Big Sur, leaving it stuck on macOS Catalina. However, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be changing that and installing macOS Big Sur on this computer. Now, for this video, I've chosen a patcher called Patch Sur, as from my experience, this is the easiest and simplest patcher to use for most people. So now let's switch to a screen recording to go through the steps on how to do this. To start off, we need to download Patched Sir. To do this, go to your web browser. In this case, I'm going to use Safari. So open it up. And then type in Patched Sir. Search it in Google. And then you'll want to click on the first link at the top, which will say Ben Sover slash Patched Sir. It'll be a GitHub link, so click that. And also, there's his website here. So it'll say Patch Sir Home. Also open that, because that will help you. It's got to so say, we'll just go to the website here. You can see that it's a simple website which gives you detailed instructions about how to do it. So it'll be similar to what I'm telling you today. So if you need any help, check here. It also says Supported Max in detail. So I recommend checking there before you continue this guide. Alright, so now go back to the GitHub page and then you'll want to go down to the right of the page and click on the release. So as of time of recording, the latest is 0.0.4 .0 beta. So I'll just open that. And open and then click on patch to DMG. So you'll need to scroll down to this. This is the only file you'll need for this patching. So open that up. It will load. Click allow. And then it will download the patcher. All right, so now that the download is finished, we can close Safari and then open the download. So go to Downloads and click on patchsir.dmg. This will verify and then open patchsir. So now we need to double click to open it. And it will, it'll say that it can't be opened because it's from an unidentified developer. So what you'll need to do, click OK. What you need to do is go to System Preferences. Go to Security and Privacy. Wait for it to load, and then go General, and then click Open anyway, and then click Open. So it'll say, Welcome to Patch Sir. It says, Patch Sir is a simple, easy to use patcher for macOS Big Sur on your unsupported Mac. It sets up the ideal environment for Big Sur and makes sure that your favorite services like iCloud still work. So I'll click Start. Continue, and then you can read this. I suggest that you do, and click continue. And now you choose the versions of macOS that you would like. So for me, I'm going to go release, and for most people, it will be release. And click continue. Now at the moment, this version only supports updating, so we'll just have to choose that. Go continue, and now it will download the files that will patch your computer. So just wait for that to finish. This will depend on your internet speed, how fast this is.
Okay, so now it's going to ask you to download Mac OS Big Sur, but in this case, I've already got an installer, so I'm going to click View Other Versions, and then I'm going to click Find an Installer in the top left-hand corner of the window. So we'll click that, and then it will open a window where you need to find the installer. So I'm going to go to the Applications folder, and I'm going to scroll down until I find Install Mac OS Big Sur. So I'll click on it, and then I'll click Open. And then we'll click Use Pre-downloaded Installer App. Now it's going to need your administrator password so it can run. And now you need to select the USB volume that you're going to use. Now, before you do, be warned that this will erase your drive. So I'm going to go to Disk Utility and erase my drive first because I want it to be blank. So I'm going to go to, this is my USB drive. I'm going to click Erase, and then I'm going to click Erase. This will erase the disk, so it's ready to copy the installer files to. So I'll just wait for that to complete. Okay, when it's completed, it will give you a little tick and say Erase process is complete. So we'll click Done, and we'll quit Disk Utility. Okay, now I'm going to click Refresh. And I'm going to click, this is my USB drive, so I'm going to click it, and then go continue. And it's just warning you that the content will be erased, we'll go continue. And now it's going to erase and copy the files to the USB drive. So this will take a while, um, I recommend using a USB 3.0 drive if possible, because it will be quicker. Uh, and this process will also depend on the speed of the hard drive or SSD in your computer. So I'll come back to this when this is completed. Okay, so now that the patcher has finished copying the Mac OS Big Sur installer files to the USB, it's now time to restart this Mac. Okay, so now we're going to restart this MacBook. So we go restart. And while it reboots, you're going to need to hold down the option key and it will show up these list of boot devices. So I'll just wait for this to load. Okay, so now it's time to boot up this MacBook into the bootable USB. So we'll turn the computer on and hold down the option key. So keep holding the option key until you see the list of boot devices show up. Okay, and now you'll see the list of boot devices. So to start off, we're going to need to move this over to EFI boot. Now, as far as I know, this is installing the patches onto the system so it'll actually boot into the USB. So we'll click enter on this, and this will shut down your computer. So you're going to need to reboot it after a few seconds and hold down the option key once again. And now you'll see this page again. And this time we're going to go to install Mac OS Big Sur. So it looks like that. And then we'll just click enter. And now this is going to boot into the Mac OS Big Sur installer USB. So this may take some time depending on the speed of your USB. And we'll come back when it's booted up. Okay, so now this Mac has successfully booted up into the Mac OS Big Sur installer USB. So now that we're here, if you're going to just want to upgrade your computer and keep all your files, you want to, you're going to want to go straight to install Mac OS Big Sur. However, if you'd like to do a clean install and erase all data, you'll need to go to Disk Utility first. So double click on Disk Utility. And then it will load up the disks. And then you'll see a page similar to this. Now, you're going to want to find the partition you want to install Mac OS Big Sur onto. And then if you would like to start afresh and erase all data, you'll click Erase here. You'll name it and then choose the format, in this case APFS, and then you'll click Erase. However, in this case, I'm going to do an upgrade and keep the data. So I'm going to quit out of Disk Utility. I'm going to double click on Install Mac OS Big Sur. So we'll let that load in. And now you'll see the window that says Mac OS Big Sur. So we'll click continue. 
we'll click agree. And then it'll ask you where you would like to install Mac OS Big Sur. So in this case, I'm going to install it on the partition Macintosh HD. So we'll click that and then click continue. And then it'll warn you that your computer is not connected to a power source and I would recommend that. So I'll just click continue. And now it's going to install Mac OS Big Sur onto your chosen partition. Now this will take a while depending on the speed of your hard drive or SSD and also the speed of your, your USB. So once again, we recommend that you use USB 3.0 for this. So we'll come back when this is finished. Okay, so now the Mac has rebooted off the USB installer and now it's going to install it on the hard drive. So this will probably take around another half an hour or so and it will reboot multiple times during the process. It'll uh, eventually give you a little time indicator here of how much estimated time is remaining. But for now, just sit tight and wait for it to finish installing. As you can see, the time, estimated time remaining indicator has come on. So it's saying about 29 minutes remaining. That's usually pretty accurate from my testing. So you'll just have to wait for that to finish. Okay, so as you can see, it now says about a minute remaining on the installation. So we are very close to the end now. So once this completes, it's going to reboot your computer several times. And then after it's done that, it will show you the setup screen. So we'll come back when this is finished. Okay, so as you can see, the computer is now loading into the operating system. So any moment now, we should be greeted with the login screen. And there we go. So it is now logged into Mac OS Big Sur, or boot it up rather. So now we've got to log in and then we'll complete the setup process. Okay, so this will now load the setup page. So we're logging in for the first time into Mac OS Big Sur. So you've got to expect it to take a little while because it will be optimizing and trying to prepare the operating system for your particular model of Mac. Okay, so as you can see, this new notification has popped up saying optimizing your Mac, performance and battery life may be affected until completed. So as I said before, you'll just have to wait for the computer to optimize for the new operating system. So you can't expect the greatest performance until this is complete. Okay, so the Mac has now gone to a black screen, but that's a good sign because it means it's slowly loading in to the desktop. Okay, so the setup screen is now loading in, which is good. All right, so we can now run through the setup of Mac OS Big Sur. I'm going to click not now for accessibility. I'm going to disable ask Siri. Okay, and it's now set it up our Mac. Okay, so now that we have completed the setup of Mac OS Big Sur, all that's left to do is to install the patches and kicks onto the system. So we're going to switch to a screen recording to show how to do that. Okay, so as you can see, we're now on the Mac OS Big Sur desktop and all our files are still here from Mac OS Catalina, so it hasn't removed any of them. So as you can see here, Wi-Fi is on, but it's not finding any network, so we're going to need to install a patch for that. So to do this, go to Spotlight Search in the top right-hand corner of your display, and search for Patch Sir, and then click on the application that is called Patch Sir. So open that, and then you're not going to need to click on Patch Kex. So then go Continue, and then click Force Skip Check. You'll need to enter your administrator password and now it will patch the kex on your system. 
So this will allow Wi-Fi to work, USBs to work, heaps of different things. Now if you're still having issues after installing these patches, there are additional patches on the GitHub site. So if you need to do that, go back to that site and download those patches and install them. So that will fix any other issues that are not covered by these main patches. But for most Macs, these will be all you need. So I'll just let it patch and we'll come back when it's finished. So as you can see, the patcher has completed and it says restart to finish. So once you have restarted and rebooted into Mac OS Big Sur, things like Wi-Fi and USB should work with no problems. So I'll restart it and then we'll come back. Okay, so now that I've rebooted my Mac, things like Wi-Fi and USB are all working fine. Now from my experience of using a patched version of Mac OS Big Sur on this MacBook, I've had no problems at all and in some cases I almost think it runs better than Catalina used to. So that's my personal experience, so I don't think you're going to run into any slowdowns with this. So hopefully this video was helpful in getting some new life into your unsupported Mac. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and we'll see you all in the next video.